What's up friends, this is Manny and welcome to a really ridiculous setup today. Something I didn't expect to work this well. Uh, the 600 meter range Eldridge Blight weapon on the Dagon. Six of them fully maxed. Obviously there's gonna be a lot of damage coming but to be continued. Um, but yeah, let me show you what we're running. Six times these insane beasts that already looks ridiculous. Um, and then increasingly the damage increases up to double damage with the successive or subsequent shots. C together with Kestrel Drone and the Manny Pilot with Overdrives. I mean, we're really rocking some ridiculous firepower here in this video. So I have a few different maps for you. Let's go and enjoy this one and just ruin uh, the entire map of Yamantau in the first one, okay? Because uh, the weapon certainly has enough range to do that here. Um, also, I recently made a video for the New Year celebration uh, where I ask you tons of questions where I need your feedback. If you haven't yet seen the video, because I want to make 2024 a much better year than 2023. And I need your help for that to get a couple of uh, feedbacks, insights and ideas from you. Uh, and that was asked in this video in the top right corner or the recent video on the channel. Uh, with Happy New Year War Robots and uh, the um, Raven as the topic of the video. If you haven't yet seen it, check it out, please, because uh, I could really use some of your uh, insights on that uh, with the questions I've asked you. Uh, but yeah, let's uh, let's just ruin some uh, some Yamantau for the enemy here. You see, we have uh, already eight to one. Everything I shoot at either dies in one or two shots. If I fire with the third shot, which is the highest damage output, double damage, then it would literally be a one-hit kill. And I think these weapons used to do 300 or 400 percent damage with the third shot when they were new, right? Imagine what how this would look like nowadays. Uh, but yeah, let's. Uh... <laughs> Dude, this is just insane. This is not a live recording. I played this a few days ago and cut this together already for you so that it's a nice montage with nice action fun. But let me just tell you guys, I, I, I did not expect the weapon to perform like this. And every shot I fired, I was surprised to see how much damage it did. How easy Living Legend is. Of course, let's keep in mind, I'm not running a face shift. I'm not running, um, not even last stand. So. Uh, uh, sorry, I have face shift, but I don't have last stand. Sorry, that's what I wanted to say. I don't have a last stand, so if somebody was to shield break me, I would be in trouble, because uh, a strong shield breaking robot, for example, this uh, harpoon looms there, is a real deal breaker for me, and that's why I'm trying to get away from him, because he's literally the hard counter to my setup right now. Um, and you see, I've almost died from it, and that was just a few seconds, because I'm this vulnerable. I'm, I'm a glass cannon. This Lynx, no, sorry, this Dagon, the way I've built it here with the overdrive and no last stand, it's an absolute glass cannon. It brings out insane firepower, but at the same time, it, it can be killed like in two or three shots. A Harpy Siren flying up with bendy bullets, shield breaking me with their legendary pilot. Dude, it is basically the end of me. Uh, the only thing I have to stay alive is a face shift and sometimes, like here, I'm even EMP'd, right? Thankfully that scorpion wasn't getting inside my shield and he didn't have shield breaking weapons so I could live it. I could live through that. But see how easily we just dominated the map with this much firepower. The overdrive was even active for a longer period of time here. Still, Pixonic, we still need overdrive to be reworked uh, because in its current form, I've said it a few times, it's really worthless because you're sacrificing, you have to take at least two overdrives, just one doesn't make any difference. Um, because you don't want to lose your weapons in order to get more damage output. Like, that makes no sense, right? So you need to have the threshold high enough so that you can benefit from it. But then again, you constantly heal up. Now, battleships, passive healing skills on pilots, on robots, and whatsoever. So many reasons why you heal past the threshold. And you can't really, uh, even with gray HP restore, stay underneath the threshold of overdrive. It's just not realistic that you can possibly do that. And as that, we really, really, really need Overdrive to stay active once it was active. 
so that there's no question about it. You, you once crossed that threshold, you once lost it like I did right here, overdrive is running and it will stay running, no matter if you heal up or not afterwards. That, that's the only way overdrive would make sense nowadays in a time where a single module like a uh, nuclear amp does like four things more for you than overdrives do that even require two module slots to be used, right? Um, just on a side note, said it a few times, just said it again in case Pixonic is uh, listening. Um, and I believe maybe they're even considering it because I feel like there was a test like this on the test server. I'm not sure though. Uh, let's see. Um, but the damage output from these uh, blights is impressive. Uh, we have just reached the end of the first match. I think there's a luchador spawning in. Yep, there it is. I remember that. Uh, and one salvo, no, two, two shots and he's basically lost 15% already. Then I just go behind him, he doesn't even want to turn around after him or he's just going to shoot something else. And then after his reflector he gets another one in the jump and then it should be it. Now look how fast we can drop him now that I uh, start opening fire. Pop, 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 pop. Guy goes down so quick. And also what I've noticed is that these weapons seem to fill up the battleship meter extremely quick. Look, we did 19 kills, 6.2 million damage. Admittedly, it was not a match of pure meta. I have to say that here um, because I know these comments would come in. People saying, man, there was really not many Okokochis and, uh, and uh, Afians around. You're right. Uh, sometimes I get lucky and I have some, some matches where it's not so powerful and I can really freely snipe. Uh, and some other matches I get constantly pummeled around by Ohokochis and Afions and, and those matches I typically won't be able to make a really good recording. Let, uh, honestly, I, 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 obviously, if you have like uh, three uh, Afions flying around you, uh, you know, your robot is gone. And, uh, and that's when the recording stops because that's the setup I want to show you. So probably not, not really such a big surprise that the matches that end up here in these videos are mostly the ones where I don't get swarmed by three Ohokochis or something. The uh, one Ohokochi I can pretty much deal with, but too many. Here you see an Ophion coming in. I can deal with it. I can face shift. I am even attacked by this behemoth at the same time. It's not a problem due to the face shift, due to the battleship. I can do deal with one meta bot, even a second, even this scorpion jumping on me uh, shortly after. It's 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 deal. I can deal with that, but there is such a thing as too much, <laughs> especially when you're not running last stand and not running <clears throat> the the setup that can't be killed but rather you run something that is maximized for simply maximum damage and in return it's pretty much a glass cannon. Yeah, sometimes I got killed so quick I couldn't even look that fast. <laughs> and obviously that recording <laughs> won't make it into the video uh, because I don't think it's gonna be very interesting to see me not doing damage, you know. <coughs> Sorry, still having a cough. Man, it's not going away. Uh, I was surprised to see how much durability that uh, Erebus shield had. Did you see that? I, I think he was absorbing more than one entire salvo of all three shots. Um, very surprising. Now this guy should have activated the Fafnir ability here. He did, he tried to, but he did it too late. That just shows how quickly this setup kills you. It is so fast you can barely even activate an ability before you die. <laughs> it's nuts, man. Really. And also, we have meanwhile reached 322,000 HP again with the Kestrel Drone restoring health, uh, s uh, both health, green or regular health regen, plus gray HP restored per kill. And then the battleship also gives us, uh, with a durability extender, another one. Look, this Imugi spawned in and got killed in a single shot. And it wasn't even the third shot with the highest amount of damage. It was the second shot that I believe deals around 150,000, uh, 150%. First shot, 100%, so 1.0 regular damage output. Second shot, 1.5 times multiplier, I think, if I'm not mistaken. And the third shot has a multiplier of 2.0, so double damage for the third shot. But that wasn't even the third shot. Now, we have this, uh, this Newton Titan down there. And let me just make his life miserable because I have a position from here from where he can't even shoot me. Look, I just go back and his shot goes into nowhere. And then the damage output I can do when I open fire, man. This poor guy doesn't have the slightest trace of a chance, dude. And it's good. It feels good when a Newton just gets completely scrapped. Um, because these things are usually so annoying and with their chokes. But on this map here, I have a pretty good position. The enemy team is under pressure from my team, not just me. My team overall is performing extremely well here. First enemies are already dropping out. Uh, and I think we've really dominated this one uh, with uh, with the performance of this Dagon and together with the performance of my, my buddies in the match. And 
again for those who missed my video uh, about uh, New Year Mer uh, not Merry uh, Happy New Year for everyone um, who hasn't heard it in my other video and again if you haven't seen this one it would be great if you could have a look at it because it asks you a lot of questions of, for which I could really use some of your uh, answers some uh, information so next uh, map I would say but it's the same map actually it's just a different side and we're performing or overperforming uh, pretty well <laughs> with these six freaking blights. It is so much damage coming from these things. It is such a nut, uh, nutty setup, seriously. Unbelievable. Uh, making the sound volume a little louder here because it was a little too quiet before. All right, so what do we have here? It's an Aochun. No, it's an Imugi. Looked like an Aochun for a second there. Uh, but it's actually the Imugi. And interestingly enough, the Imugi is in stealth so much longer than the Aochun. <clears throat> Even though the Aochun is supposed to be, you know, the flying dragon, super powerful, uh, top end, uh, strongest robot of the dragon category, but it's such a joke nowadays. It has been nerfed into complete oblivion. It, it is completely dead. It has been nerfed to complete uh, uselessness. Um, very sad. Pixonic also 100% unwilling to change anything about it. I've made like four videos about this topic, asked Pixonic perf pers perfectly and repeatedly to change it, to buff the Aochun, give it back some of its literally dragon abilities and make it work. Because the entire robot itself isn't working anymore. Similar as the Sef Seraph there, for example. Um, many robots actually, but uh, the uh, Aochun being one of the worst. Also the Hawk being one of those that really need to be buffed. Pixonic doesn't care. They don't care. They don't care if ro ro robots have been nerfed to complete uh, obsolete. Obso What's the noun to obsolete? Uselessness. Obsoleteness. Ob That's not a thing. That's not a word, is it? Uh. Uh. Ob I don't know. I don't know if there is a word like this that I'm looking for, but you know what I'm talking about. Um, and uh, yeah, so. Pixonic, you have a job to do. It's your job. It is literally your job to keep the game running. And that also includes uh, counter counteracting your own power creep, which is your fault and no one's else. So uh, make that, um, uh, bring the dragon back uh, and bring the hawk back and bring the inquisitor back and many of the robots back. The, the, the duration uh, on the stealth uh, jump of the inquisitor is okay. The, the uh, cooldown for his ability is not. Uh, and and it's it's the case with the Spectre and many other robots. It's really this bad. And sorry, I don't I don't accept ultimate robots as a solution. This is G you trying to sell us something again that you have already sold us before, and and that wouldn't even and and, and by doing so, even bypassing any invest investments that players have made in these robots, uh, and. Uh, pfft, and just start letting people start from scratch without even giving them a chance to trade in their already obtained Spectre for an Ultimate Spectre. I wouldn't say anything if you could trade in a level 12 Mark II Spectre for a level 1 Mark I, uh, Mark I Ultimate Spectre, right? You would still have to level it from scratch, but at least you can already start with the Spectre unlocked in Ultimate State. That would be kind of fair. Uh, you know, it would be a win-win because you're going to have to invest a lot of credits into re-upgrading a robot you already had upgraded, but at the same time you're gonna get in the end a better robot than before, so you see a point in doing it, they see a point in making you giving, it, uh, giving you an incentive to upgrade an older robot without, having, without them having to completely redevelop an entirely new robot with a new set of abilities. They can basically steal their own content and still make some money and some um, incentive for you guys out of it. Uh, and that would be an actually kind of middle way for a win-win, a good compromise. By the way, this is a hacker. Uh, it's a Kurd clan or something, and uh, they have two players, and both of them are hacking. You may have seen it in the video. Um, but uh, yeah, a compromise and a fair solution is obviously no, not on the table, uh, because uh, we get content that is <laughs> overpowered, that requires constant sub-nerfing later, and so on. Um, but yeah, the, this year are the guys. I'm uh, reporting them for cheats and exploits, as you all should do. Um, I'm not really sure how much it works, how much this does, but uh, I'll, I'll do it when I see it. And also, I show you the IDs here, and I show you the hangar real quick, so that you uh, the ID for Pixonic, so they can do their job, and for you guys to also see that these uh, hangars they don't have uh, a speed module. So these speed hacking robots that we've seen on the map. 
they were not accelerated by a speed module, nitro unit or anything. No, 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 they were just hacking. But un interestingly enough, they're only hacking speed, which means they're still lost the game. They weren't doing the usual, you know, immunity, constant uh, explosion, hellburner thing that kills your team instantly. No, that would they wouldn't do be de doing that. They just speed hacked. It's a weird, weird way to get, do it. Um, anyways, uh, let's go and have some fun. That Ohokochi lost almost its entire health. But then he got his ability back at 50% threshold, and uh, so I couldn't finish him off. Uh, but however, you know, it's already a win if you can uh, release that 50% mark from them. Because it means they can't come in again, attack you, and then at 50% do that again with the ability being ready. Uh, so it's a win. Um, and now after his ability runs out, I should be able to finish him off with my team here pretty well. Yeah, so uh, the Dagon um, robot is definitely none of the robots I would I would say needs a nerf because it's a glass cannon. It has a lot of firepower, but at the same time, if you just shield break it, it gets destroyed pretty quickly. Um, something you can't say about, for example, an Ohokochi. There is no quick solution to an Ohokochi. There is none. Um, and, uh, and there's no countering it. That second ability comes back no matter what without any right doing on his part just because you can't drop him below 50% during the ability run. And so, that's why I said this robot should never have gotten that pilot skill. Uh, deft or clever survivor to begin with. Um, but yeah, Dagon I feel like it's okay. Uh, and it's a good robot, but there are some older robots we really need to see some, some, uh, some reworks. And again, not talking ultimate, talking actually doing your job, uh, countering your own power creep, and uh, allowing uh, certain robots like the Hawk or the um, Aochun, there are among uh, other robots as well, to just at least fulfill their role and perform, you know, in, in concept, how they were introduced, you know, which currently is not the case. But yeah, so what do you think, by the way, about the Blight uh, on the Dagon? I'm really surprised to see what you hear, because I was freaking surprised about the performance of these things. I did not expect them to do that uh, work like this. I knew, I mean, the weapons weren't bad. Uh, I felt it when a Harpy or Siren would shoot me with their shield break and I'm in a Dagon and they run these weapons, I almost die instantly. Um, so I knew these weapons wouldn't be bad with the range, with the accuracy and so on, but that they have this much damage output really surprised me. Uh, and so, yeah, I don't know about you guys. Tell me what you think. And again, don't forget the uh, New Year's video. Uh, link down in the description, pinned comment, also in the top right. And um, yeah, make sure to... Uh, here are the things that I ask you in this video, which is important for me to go forward, all right? So, see you then. Manny Gaming signing off, and um, Happy New Year again for those who haven't heard my first video. Bye-bye.